Okay, so here, uh, here we are uh, for the today's meet. All uh, the, our professional speaker, today's speaker is all the way from UK and she is a life coach. And uh, over, to you, over to you, the professional. Please give us a little bit of your introduction. Yeah, so excited. And maybe you, need, you would introduce yourself first before I introduce myself because we're going to be uploading this also. Okay, um, my, platforms. my name is... Okay, my name is Vika Dhingra and I'm the founder of uh, the uh, Global Project, which is, which is FemBoss, and GWP, which is uh, Global Women in Psychology, is running under this uh, Global Project. And uh, here we are today uh, for the today's interview session. I'm, I'm professionally, I'm a clinical psychologist, and uh, uh, today's speaker is all the way from UK, and she's actually a life coach. And uh, uh, let, let's get back to her and uh, take, uh, take her a little bit of her introduction. Over to you, Professor. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm so excited, Bumika, that we get to meet. We have been in communication for the last three years or so. And before I introduce myself, I just want to really appreciate the Femme Boss and the Global um, Women Network that we are a part of and all the different women who are in that community, uh, women who are serving in different areas of psychology, coaching, and and that and, and the like. So I'll introduce myself real fast. My name is Joan Maturi, and actually, I'm not just a purpose coach, I am also a business coach. I work with professional women who are looking to really tap into their unique gifts, to step into their purpose and align their soul's path so that they can create a business linked to their unique gifts and talents that they are madly, deeply in love with. So really everything that I do is linked to your life purpose because I believe that if you're not honoring your purpose, you are suffocating your soul. Back to you, Bumika. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, here we, uh, I wanted to ask one question to you Does uh, having a sense of purpose actually improve anybody's health? Oh my goodness, absolutely. The first thing that I want to say is that purpose is the reason we were created. Everybody was created. We were not created just to exist. Everybody walking on this earth was created for a purpose. And because it's in our DNA to have a sense of purpose, to have a sense of meaning, to have a sense of significance, to have a sense of, you know, adding value to the world, if we are not doing that or we do not feel that we are doing that, there is what we call miscongruence or misalignment. And whenever there's a misalignment in any form, place, form or shape in our bodies, in our minds, guess what? Naturally, you will become sick. So I strongly believe there's a very big correlation between our health and our purpose. And I'm just going to give you a big, uh, a personal example. And of course, we're going to talk more um, through this time together. When um, I was employed, I had a really good job and it was a fulfilling job. I was happy in what it was in, uh, in what I was doing. But I can tell you for a fact that I still felt that there was so much more that I was put here to do. I just could not put a finger to it. And it's so funny, uh, uh, Bumikar and everybody else that is watching that the moment I truly discovered what I was put here to do it's like all the sicknesses in my body just melted away you know it's like I've been in complete alignment even you know even things like this my skin everything just started glowing why because I'm operating in my inner glow I'm operating from my inner flow. I'm operating from a sense of purpose. Every morning when I wake up, there's something that motivates me. There's something that drives me. There's something that is keeping me alive, if that makes sense. And I strongly believe that the moment we step into our purpose, without a doubt, without a doubt, you will see your health naturally just getting better. So maintaining a positive mental health and treating any mental so health conditions is crucial to stabilize our behaviors, emotions, thoughts, and focusing on the mental health care can increase productivity, enhance our self-image, and improve relationships. So why actually the mental health is important for a happy life? Yeah. So the first and foremost, your mental health is, you know, for a very long time, we never paid much attention to mental health. Many of us just took, you know, consideration to our physical health because that's especially from a cultural standpoint, from a social standpoint, the mental health um, 
arena was not really, really, really explored. But thankfully, these last few years, it has it has been explored. And one of the charities that I'm involved in here in the UK is called Mind. And what Mind has realized it's it's a it's a it's a it's an institution that helps people who are struggling with mental health illness is that the moment we give people who are struggling with mental health something that gives them some form of purpose or meaning even if it's just an activity so what mind does and i wish i could show you they come with a kit every single month that they mail out to the to the people that are struggling with mental health. And this kit has could have different activities. It could have coloring activities. It could have a little book. It could have um, uh, sketching. It could have crochet activities. Because at the end of the day, you know, there's even a thing that says, you know, an, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. And we have realized that there's a very big correlation between, you know, doing activities that seemingly will help reduce stress and helping people with mental health. And I'm very curious to throw it back to you, uh, Bumika, what, as a clinical psychologist, because this is very different from coaching, what has been found, you know, what have you guys found in your research around the link between mental health and purpose? What, what has come up in that area? I'm curious to hear. Actually, uh, when uh, any any person actually, uh, when they uh, get to know that uh, that there is an importance of having a quality of life, and uh, that person is actually having uh, suffering from depression or any of this, uh, any of the disorders, so uh, they come up uh, to us and just take. Uh, they they want us to know that they are actually suffering from something. And we have uh, we we need to diagnose them. We need to take a look at the uh, at the symptoms of uh, whatever they they are sharing and whatever they are uh, symptoms they are telling us. So uh, they actually want us to know that uh, they are they are actually having a quality of life. They are living a quality of life. So um, they they expect us to uh, understand that uh, what they are going through. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, their happiness, their whatever, whatever they are going through, they, they want us to know, they want us to feel that thing. So um, some some of the times they just uh, let us uh, let us know that uh, the, 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 these are the symptoms and these are uh, these are uh, the ways they are tackling those uh, situations they are facing in their lives. And sometimes they, whenever we have a counseling sessions with those people, those patients, they actually tell us that the, the kind of a depression, the kind of a situations they are facing, and they kind of, uh, so they want us to know that uh, the, they, they need a quality of life. And, 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 and we are, we, sometimes we feel so helpless that uh, we, are, we don't have any you know, knowledge regarding how to create a purpose in their life. So uh, these these are the kind of situations that we get uh, fixed, and uh, sometimes we feel so helpless with those uh, those patients that uh, we can't do anything. We just uh, we can we can only listen to you and we just diagnose. We can only diagnose you and we just give you the treatment, those therapies. And sometimes uh, these these things actually makes us feel like we are uh, good for nothing at that kind of a situation because do you uh, people the life coaches, the business coaches sometimes. Uh, can do the best for those patients. Yes, and, um, and we I really, I, sorry to interrupt you. I really like that because most people do not understand that the 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 you know the the medicine part, the the yeah. psychology part has to combine with the life purpose part. Yeah with the life coaching part and there's no way you know and I'm, I'm so happy you bring that up that you psychologists can operate in isolation and there is no way that us coaches should operate in isolation and that's why I strongly believe that even the network that you have created is so helpful because we, we are able to bring psychologists even as we give medication even as medication is prescribed for depression bipolar you know any of the conditions anxiety I strongly believe there are other remedies that can be incorporated that do not necessarily need to include medication and that is where the coaching comes in so thank you so much for highlighting 
wanting that because sometimes even by them just finding that sense of purpose Bumi, I've come to realize that they even get off medication. Case in point, one of my clients was struggling. She went through a very traumatic life experience and without going into the details, she, um, she came to me for life, life coaching work. And as we were doing the life coaching, it was the tools I was using were really helping her to sort of bridge the gap between where she is and where it is that she wants to go. And she told me that as we were speaking, she realized that a lot of what was missing from her life was that sense of purpose. And the moment we started going through the different tools, and I, of course we can, we'll talk about the, that as we go, some of the tools that we use to help the people identify their purpose, it became clear to her that that was one of the missing points. And as she started doing the work, as she started getting in tune with herself, when she started being okay, operating in the giftings that she has, she found that the medicate the doctor actually said that she can now reduce the dose. So instead of having the full dose, they reduced the dose drastically. And she says that that in her mind is as a result of her now living in her purpose. So yes, there is a very big correlation. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, how does exactly mental health relate to the quality of life? Yeah, if you're, if you're depressed, if you're anxious, if you're going through uh, mental trauma or you're going through anything that is affecting your mind, obviously you cannot perform at your optimum. And I can use this as an example for myself. The moments when I'm going through a life situation that is giving me anxiety and sadness, I realize immediately the quality of my, pro, you know, my productivity, my focus, my ability to even serve my clients is greatly impacted. So one of the things that I recommend always is that even as a coach, even as a mentor, please take the time to sort out your mental health. Because how can you be of service to people if you're struggling yourself? How can you be able to help other people if you yourself have unresolved issues or you're struggling with something that has not been treated? And I always say that on this world, in this world, we are, there are many wounded healers. We are healers, we help other people, we are psychologists, we are coaches, we are mentors, but we are wounded ourselves. And what I want to say today is that as a wounded healer, the first gift you can give yourself and the first gift you can give your clients is healing yourself first. Being able to deal with your own demons, being able to, to get the help that you need to process some of the stuff that has happened in your life. Because what happens with psychology, coaches and all that we are empaths we are very loving people so what happens because of our compassionate nature we also take on a lot of other people's problems there are times i you know i i'm on my whatsapp and 10 messages are just problems i'm going through this i'm going through this i'm going through and that's tough if we do not have a processing mechanism, it's very easy to get to us because we care, we are compassionate. That's the type of people we are. So the first thing that I would want to say is, yes, you re your mental health will definitely affect the quality of your life. And I strongly believe that even as a professional, we all need therapy. We all need somebody to help us process the stuff that is going through our our heads so that we can be able to offload it so that we can be able to process it so that we can be able to get it off our heads so that we can be of best service to those we have been called to serve so there is no shame in having a therapist there is no shame in getting help and there is no shame in having to take medication for any mental health struggles if at all you you, you have them because again so there so really quickly because how come it's okay to say, that just came to my mind, how come it's okay to say that I'm having a stomachache? How come it's okay to say I'm having a headache? How come it's okay to say that, you know, I'm having pain in my back? You know, we also have to realize that mental health, mental illness or mental health conditions are the same as any other conditions. So we have to be in a position where we now normalize treating mental health like any other sickness. When somebody has a headache, you don't 
frown down on them. When somebody has a stomachache, you don't say anything. You're like, oh, get treated, get medicine. So similarly, when it comes to mental health, we should really normalize people um, getting the support and treatment for that. Absolutely. Mental health should not be considered as a shame. Absolutely. Yes. It, it is actually, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, there are some studies. There are some studies that shows uh, consistently that demonstrates a link between the fi finding meaning of life and experiencing the psychological well-being. So, how and why finding meaning of life can it actually improve well-being? Yeah, I'll give a case study, and I wish I could pull it up um really quickly from my phone if you'll allow me to, so that I don't. Yeah, sure, sure. I don't. Absolutely. Yeah. But as I pull it up, can you just be talking a little into that so that I can be able to get it if that's okay? Yeah. Yes, uh, so uh, there are some of the findings that actually. Yeah. Yeah, there is. There are some actually. There are some kind of a findings that actually uh, demonstrate a lot, a lot of a link between the finding of the meaning of a life and ex actually experiencing the psychological well-being. So, uh, just by finding a meaning of life, we can actually experience a kind of a psychological uh, the, the positive the positiveness and the and the mindfulness and many other things like that, including the psychological well-being as well. So there are some of the findings uh, uh, which tell all the, the links, the relation between the both, but how and why exactly the finding uh, a meaning in life uh, by any person can actually improve the well-being of that person. Yeah, we're going to talk about that, but I really want to start with Victor Frankl. I don't know if you've heard, he wrote The Meaning of Life, yeah, Man's Meaning of Life. I forget the exact name of the word. And what happened with this man is that he gives a, a very vivid account of an individual's experience as a prisoner in the Nazi concentration camp. I don't know if you've been able to find it. It's called um, uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Victor E. Frankl. And one of the things that this uh, individual, um, the individual's experience as he recounts it, he found that these people, even though they were in a concentration camp and even though they were in very extenuating conditions, the fact that there was, they, they had something that was pulling them, you know, their, 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 their focus was on love, their focus was on hope. Their focus was on, you know, responsibility and inner freedom, right? And they found that even as they were enduring these extremely harrowing conditions, there was something inside of them, which was that meaning of life that was pushing them. And one of the ways that, I, some of the ways that I have found um, Bumi for my clients, and these are some of the tools that I'd want to mention around the meaning of life is number one, being able to discover what true happiness means for you. You know, we are all different individuals. And for me, what gives me happiness may not necessarily be what gives me happiness. Yesterday, my friend and I, went, um, my when you and you were, you were trying to contact me, we usually have Sunday lunch uh, here as is custom with friends and we go out. And one of my friends at the table said something so special. She said, for her, it's not the big things that matter. It's the little things that matter. You know, being able to just go outside for 10 minutes and just get some fresh air for her that is so important as is for me. For somebody else, having a big Mercedes Benz packed outside their house could be what gives them happiness. So happiness is subjective. You need to find out what true happiness means for yourself. The second thing is pursuing your gifts and your talents. It's a non-negotiable. I keep saying that, you know, when you operate in your gifting, you will encounter boundless joy. You will encounter boundless hope. Like the Victor Frankl, we, we still read a lot of his um, his messages, right? And I'm going to give you a couple of his quotes, you know? And another thing that I found is very significant in us living a life of meaning is having and creating connection. Like what you and I have done, look, it's over three years, but here we are now, right? We have maintained the consistent connection. We have kept in touch. You're all the way in India. I am all the way in, U in UK, but there's something between me and you that just loves each other. You know, even though we are in different places, is and something that connects us. And that connection is a very big, uh, uh, big, very big thing in terms of fulfillment of purpose. Another thing 
that I found is very important as we search for meaning in our lives is being in a position where we serve and help others. And that's why as coaches, as therapists, as psychologists, counseling psychologists, and all that area, we get so much fulfillment because we are in the business of helping others, right? Another thing is really pursuing what makes you happy. You know, and not just the happiness that I was saying, like just in terms of doing something, but what, what delights your heart, really? So for me, it's teaching. I love to teach. I love to mentor. Like right now in this environment that you and I in, I'm in my element. I'm loving it. I love to speak. I love to share. I love to communicate. So that's that's for me. What would you like to add on as I give you the 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 quote that I wanted to give you? What else would you like to add, Bumi, as I get, give you the quote? Okay, uh, you want to give, give, give the quote? Yeah, I wanted you to add something as I get you the quote. I want to give it to you. Okay. I would want you to add on, on something as I get you the quote. Okay, okay. Uh, actually, there are kind of a, uh, some of the tips there are uh, that, that can actually help us to find the purpose of the life, including that we can develop a growth mindset and having a growth mindset that can be linked to a sense of uh, purpose. And we can create a personal vision statement. We can practice gratitude and we can turn our pain into the purpose and we can even soar our passions and we, we can be a part of our community that we are actually being a part of. And uh, we can spend time with people who actually inspire us. These are the sort of things that can have, uh, uh, these are some of the tips can be, uh, which can help us to find a purpose of life. So uh, would you like to add something else on it? Yeah. So one of the quotes that he says, and this is the one that I was looking for, and I'll definitely share because he's such an, um, one of the biggest resources we have when it comes to man's search okay. for meaning is he said everything can be taken from a man and of course in this case we say also a woman but one thing the last of the human freedoms is to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way right Often yeah. outside circumstances can make life very difficult. And of course, you know, Victor Frankl met one of the most horrible fakes being in that concentration camp, right? However, in spite of what happened, he tried to make the best of the circumstance and he found meaning even in suffering, right? And this meaning is what got him through the worst of days. So for me, what I'd want to encourage everybody is that when we are no longer able to change a situation, right? Sometimes we're not able to change a situation. What happens? We challenge ourselves to change ourselves. When I find a situation that is I'm really struggling with, I'm like, this situation is very difficult, but what can I do to change myself so that I can be able to cope with that, circum with that circumstance? So as I work on changing myself, I'm then able to adapt to the circumstance and the lessons that we learn from that, the lessons that we pick up from, this is actually what helps us to really find true meaning in life. Yeah. So uh, the, the talking about the mental health actually helps us improve our communities, find it more acceptable for those suffering from the mental health to seek help. In addition, the mental health isn't just about mental illnesses, it's about being uh, maintaining a positive state of well-being. So why are we talking about mental health is actually important for anybody? Yeah, please repeat the question. You, I couldn't hear you very well. Could you repeat your question? Yeah, why talking about the mental health is actually important for any person? Yeah, because as I, you know, we've said this before, as I was saying, your, how you look at life, and this is what I've just um, mentioned now, how you, add, you know, how you view life situations, right? If you're, you know, some people look at life from half empty, another one looks at it from half full. But I found that when I maintain, and I'm talking about myself and my clients, a lot of the thing that I try to do is to help them to maintain a positive outlook. And one of the things that I have come, that we use, as I use some of the resources I use even in my coaching is 
you know, ancient te teachings, teachings that are so important, especially for me coming from the Bible, because I believe that if I operate from as a spiritual being, I, I operate from the place of spirit rather than from my body, I'm able to look at things from the angle of what does, you know, what does God say about me? You know, he says that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God says that he knows every single hair on my head. He knows, he knew me before I was even knitted in my mother's womb. And that's why spirituality is such an essential part of also maintaining your mental health. So you can be positive all you want. But I strongly believe that when we attach ourselves to a higher being, in my case, that's God. When you attach yourself to, you know, to you plug yourself to something so much bigger than, than yourself, you find yourself, you know, instantly getting hope, instantly getting peace, instantly getting joy, instantly getting into that space where you're not, you know, you're not commiserating or you're feeling sad. So what I'm trying to say is that as you what you know tap into your spirituality it's very hard for you to be in that place of connection with god right and really maintain a stance of sadness and depression because every time you're you're like you know what god is with me god is protecting me god is watching me god is providing for me as you say though and in fact some of the tools that i give my clients are affirmations because there's no way you can be in a state of gratitude and in a state of and, and, in, and in a state of positivity and at the same time be holding depressive thoughts. It cannot work. It's either or the other. So I hope that helps. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, when it comes to the emotional health, emotional health actually allows us to work productively productively cope with the stresses of everyday's life uh, it can actually help us realize our full potential sometimes it helps us to uh, work with other people and contribute to the society so why is it actually important to be mentally emotionally and socially healthy it is very important and just yesterday um you know one of the classes i was taking part in we were talking about some of the tools to use and one of the things that we we're talking uh, about was how we respond to situations versus how we react to situations and when it comes to emotional intelligence a lot of what we teach our clients is how to learn to respond many of us are very reactive in situations something is thrown at like um a stressful situation like i don't know how in in your in your city do you have a lot of traffic in your in your city, do you yes, have a, a little, yeah? yes, absolutely. Yes, so what, yes. what, when you're in traffic, just let's just use you as an so when you're in traffic, how normally of course I know you're a psychologist, you have the tools, but just think about a normal person in their in traffic, how are they? How do they react? How do most people react in traffic? They react in a lot of stress sometimes. They, they just uh, being so annoyed then and, and they are facing a lot of struggles just uh, just to reach out their destination point. Exactly. They, uh, they get, a, get into a lot of stress, actually. That's what I'm exactly. So when you're in a traffic situation, you're throwing your hats, you're hooting at people, you're, you're reacting, right? And the more you react, yeah. the more the stress levels are increasing. Now, look at this. Absolutely. When you think of responding, and this is where emotional intelligence comes in, are you going to change? The situation are you going to make your car to fly no you're in the traffic nothing is going to change so the first thing you can ask how am i going to respond to this situation number one i can say wow since i'm in this traffic i can use this time to listen to this recording <laughs> that i'm talking yes, to. Absolutely. yeah i can use the time in the traffic if i'm the passenger to read a book i can use the time in, in traffic I get so many WhatsApp messages in a day. I'll be like, you know what? This is a perfect time for me to clear all my WhatsApp messages and respond to a couple of emails. That is now responding to the situation rather than, than reacting. So what I'd want to encourage our audience is to think to yourself in terms of emotional intelligence and in terms of what you just raised is how can I be less reactive and be more responsive. Another example, um, you know, that I would want to give is a lot of us react 
when people hurt us, right? Um, you know, you people who have children, you have kids, kids can do some things that can make you go crazy, you know? And sometimes as a parent, you just don't disturb me. Da, 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 and they go crazy on the children, right? Without forgetting that kids are just kids. That's the nature of a child. Children are curious, are curious. Children will do, you know, things that will they are kids. That's what being a child means, right? So the first thing as a parent is to really look back and see where is it that I'm forcing my children to become adults? Where is it that I'm making my children to run, you know, ahead instead of letting them go through the milestones that they need, you know, in order to be able to live well, right? So what does that entail? It means you sitting down with yourself. And when it comes to responsiveness, I want to say this, Bumika, it is, it requires patience. It requires you to be sober. And some of the tools that are very important, and I'm sure you can add a few to what I'm saying, is mindfulness. Meditation is also very helpful. You know, learn to be mindful. What is mindful? Being in the present, being in the here, being in the now. As I'm with you right now, guess what? I'm not reacting. My phone is could be beeping a million messages, and I'm not concerned about that. My attention is fully with you. You know, some other tools that we use to bring us in, in, into the present and help us really not uh, have that, you know, too much chatter in our minds um, uh, is being able to meditate. For me, I have a busy mind. So I'm slowly learning how to steal my mind and to bring myself. And some of the tools that we use are apps like Headspace. We use tools like um, Calm to be able to help center your mind uh one of the other tools that i use is called soul space it's a spiritual one it's a spiritual meditation app that brings me to where i am in the here and the now so um another thing that i do and i don't know if this is something that you do is i have essential oils so my house has essential oils that calm me down we have different types of essential oils that i i i, I have you know sometimes i'll have the lavender sometimes it's the peppermint sometimes it's you know it's orange blossom just different types of scents that will help me you know be able to be in the present so there are so many tools. Um, I actually even do a lot of um coloring. So I have my coloring. Um, let me show you. I, you know, I have my coloring tools. I have my cards. Okay, can you see this? These are cards that I have. Nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I pick That's one. Nice. Can I pick one for you? Yes, I can pick one for you. So this. Yeah, are my... sure. <laughs> okay. So. So just say say start and then stop and then I, I I read for you yours. So start. So tell me start and then stop. Okay. Okay. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Do you want me to do uh, to do something and then no, in just say in tell me start and then stop and then I pick the card for you. Okay. 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 So uh, let's begin. Start. Okay. Tell me stop when you're ready. Okay. Okay, stop. So this is for you, Bumi. Can you read it? No, no, exactly. It's, it's a little bit blunt. <laughs> it says, breathe deeply, exhale through your mouth and inhale through your nose. So that's, okay. that's a stress. Deep. So you breathe deeply. Okay. Then you exhale through your mouth. And you can do that like seven times. That's a stress relief tool, right? Absolutely. Another one. Absolutely. Yeah, let's let's look at another one because I have them here in front of me, right? Here. This is another one. I'm going to read it for you. It says okay. stress is caused by being here, but wanting to be okay. there. Or being in the yeah. present, but wanting to be in the future. It's a split that tears you apart inside. So if you're trying to, how does stress come? That, you know, 
you're you're here but you want to be there you're looking at somebody else you're comparing yourself you're 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 evaluating um the you know where you are in your life and you're saying to yourself i should have been a bit farther and then you're looking at your colleagues and you're looking at your friends and you're thinking that their lives is so much better than yours it's not it's you who has chosen to look it up, to look at it that way. So the moment we start accept, accepting ourselves, the moment we start seeing ourselves um, that where we are is exactly where we are meant to be, it completely changes the game. And another thing that uh, another tool that I'll give you um, that I really like is I always say I flow, I do not force. So what this means for me is I I'm like water. I flow. If something is feeling not aligned for me, I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't pursue it. Even when it, it comes to my coaching work, if I'm about to teach a program and something tells me, oh, you know, this is not the time to do it, I will always listen because I have realized that when I force things or I try to make things, uh, you know, work and they are not really working, there is what we call miscongruence. And this miscongruence is terrible because when you're operating from a place of miscongruence, it's like you're, you know, trying to swim uphill. You know, it's like you're literally, it's just an uphill task. So I work with flow. Flow is so important for me. Yeah, so that's just something I wanted yeah. to share. Okay. So uh, uh, there are some, uh, some of the studies that shows that untreated mental illness can actually cause severe emotional, behavioral, and physical health problems, including, it actually includes unhappiness and decreased enjoyment of life and even the family context. So how mental health problems can actually impact on any person's life? Oh, sorry, Bumi, my phone, sorry, my phone was ringing. Sorry, repeat that again. Sorry, my apologies. It's okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so I was, uh, I was I was I was actually asking you that uh, there there are some studies that show that untreated mental illness can actually cause severe emotional, behavioral, and as well as physical health problems, including that it actually causes unhappiness and sometimes decreased enjoyment of the life, even the family conflict. So how mental health problems can actually impact on any person's life? Oh my goodness, and and I can tell you this from observation of you know, even family members or people that I personally know who have struggled with um, mental health issues. I have seen a very distinct um, difference between when they are, you know, they have had it treated or when, you know, because sometimes what happens with mental health, people bury their head in the sand. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, it's just, I'm just stressed. I'm just anxious. It's just going to go. But the, it's like anything, it, like a wound. If you have a wound, it's cut. You have a cut. You leave it open. You leave it exposed. It becomes toxic. It becomes contaminated. It becomes, uh, you know, it can lead to, um, what do you call it? poisoning of the bloodstream like what do you think is a small wound can become something very uh, major if it is not treated so similarly one of the things that if mental health uh, situations or mental health illnesses are not treated it becomes so much worse because what happens is that there's the build-up remember this person is already struggling and a struggling person already is going through so much internal pressure and that's why you find sometimes that somebody who is you know just think they're depressed like yesterday one of my uh, during the lunch one of my friends was sharing how her cousin um sadly committed um suicide the other day and she was saying that there was no indication that this person was struggling mentally Yes, then like everybody else, they were saying, yes, we know he had a few problems, but because of keeping it inside, not talking about it, it had been building up and the, you know, and the family did not even recognize how serious this was. And, you know, as we were speaking, one of the things she said to me, if only we knew, if only we knew he was going through this and the other, perhaps the situation would have been different because we would have been able to take him to, you know, for therapy, would have been able to take him to a, a counseling psychologist and they would have been able to give him, you know, 
the medication needed to help with you know the the thought disturbance the mood alterations and that sort of things i strongly believe that a lot of these things can be prevented bumika and that's why we are having these conversations right and that's why we have our global um uh, our global community because if every mental health professional if every life coach if everybody took this issue seriously if you shared it in your community, I share it in my community. What we are doing is we are exposing, you know, what you know, we are exposing and helping people realize that there is help because many people do not know that, that help is so near to them. Help is not far. Help is close to them. But how do they know that, that there is help? They will only know there is help through us having this type of conversation. What would you want to add there? Because I know you have a lot of input from your end. Um, actually, there are a lot of things that we need to keep in mind when it comes to uh, the person's life and, ahead, and to improve that person's life, to have a purpose in their life. So sometimes there are, there are, there are the things that we, uh, we face uh, actually with our patients, that they, they face a lot of unhappiness and sometimes suffer and they, they face decrease in the enjoyment of their life. So mm -hmm. we, need, uh, we, we actually talk to them and we, uh, we, uh, we tell them that they have to uh, improve it they have to improve it from their side only because we can only listen to them. We can't change anything. We're not life coaches. We're not business coaches or anything. We, we, they, they can do this for you. We can only diagnose you. We can only uh, bring a change in your uh, uh, present situation. We can only give you the treatments. But you have to take care of that thing. You have to take care of your purpose of your life. You have to take care of the happiness of your life. You have to change it by yourself. You have to just the help of those, uh, with those life coaches who can actually help you. Uh, you know, from anywhere from anywhere in the world so uh, these are the things that we need we actually uh, our patients sometimes and um, it, it actually it, uh, and we actually face it that the, these uh, mental health issues actually impact any person's life especially with those people who are actually suffering with the depression who are having a lot of certain serotonin uh, reuptake uh, so uh, these are actually, uh, we, we actually face it, yes, a lot of times, yes, actually. Can I ask you a quick question? So how do, how do you, how are you able to um, help diagnose people when, because this is very important, when it comes to hormonal imbalances, because a lot of times people don't realize that it's, you know, the, the, the serotonin levels, the dopamine levels, yes. all those type of things could actually you know, be a lot of affecting. Okay. I mean, actually, a patient comes to, to us and they, they tell us that they're suffering with a lot of uh, symptoms and we actually diagnose them with their symptoms. So a lot of tests are there, which uh, which helps us to diagnose the, that what, what kind of symptoms that person is actually showing to us. And uh, uh, along with that, things we can actually ask them. We um, we, we actually uh, um, we, we sit with them, we counsel with them. So uh, we, we give them counseling some, some of the times that they are, they are facing depression. If they are, if, if there is no need of the medications, if there is no need of the treatment, they can only get uh, be treated with just with the counseling session. So if that ha if that can help, we go for with the counseling things. But if the counseling is not working in that particular kind of situation, including the marital problems or the children problems or anything like that. So in that case, we actually, if it is actually a kind of a clinical thing. So in that clinical stuff, we need to diagnose that person on the basis of the, of the symptoms that person is actually telling us. So in that case, we diagnose them. And on the basis of the diagnosis, we, we take a look at them, all the symptoms and all the symptoms it tells us that the person is actually having a kind of a hormonal imbalance or anything like that. So uh, there's there's actually no um, no uh, um, test for uh, to just take a look at how what kind of a hormone imbalance is there and that because these kind of uh, these are not actually as the hormones these are actually chemical imbalances including neurons are involved so there's no can tell that that is actually have so on this of the symptoms, we actually take a look at the uh, at the person's uh, uh, patient and we diagnose them and we decide that what kind of a treatment that person is actually required with that treatment with that person. So, so uh, this, this whole thing goes this way.
Oh, that I like it. You broke off a little, but yes, I got the I got what you meant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and also, you know, one of the things that I would also encourage us as um as you know coaches and all this back to the spiritual side. I strongly feel that anybody who has a sense of spirituality, it truly and honestly, it does help, you know, having to know that there's someone who created you, someone who loves you unconditionally, you know, and being able to, you, you know, like prayer, going and saying that, you know, this is very hard for me. I cannot understand what is happening in my life right now, but please help me. You know, it helps just to release it. You know, and I'm I'm curious for you. Do you, do you also under, see that there's a very big um correlation between spirituality and supporting people going through mental yes, health? Yes, do you agree absolutely. with me? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Because religion go religion and spirituality, those both of them are parallel to each other, but they are not the same thing. Because we, if if you are following any religion, you have to follow the rules of that religion. But if you are spiritual, in that sense, you follow yourself, your karmas particularly so uh, uh, the spirituality and mental health acts actually go hand in hand if you are spiritual you you can have a better better mental well-being and uh, actually it actually helps a lot of a lot of the world yes yeah and you know as i said having that individual relationship with god because it's so personal you know my relationship with god is my relationship and that's why what you said yes. you know religion can be just full of rituals religion is very ritual driven but when it comes to spirituality and it's more about relationship it's about you know being able to tap into that personal relationship that you have with your creator you know and for me, I find that during my moments of stress, moments of anxiety, being able to know that, you know what, God, I'm going through this. Can you help me? I'm going through this. Please, please, please help. I find that that just even saying it, you know, those words coming out has been very helpful for me. So, yeah. Yes, absolutely. So uh, when it comes to to the society so unaddressed mental health problems can actually uh, have a negative influence on the homelessness or the poverty and they may, may impact the productivity of the local businesses and sometimes healthcare costs and impede the ability of the children and youth to succeed in school and sometimes even lead to the family and the community disruption so how does exactly mental health impact the society in overall sense so imagine if we were all working working in depression or stress imagine what that would be like imagine what would be like. is that yours i can hear a phone okay yeah, yeah yeah um so imagine if the and everybody here everybody was working with an undiagnosed uh, mental health condition would we be able to do anything really so the first thing that i want to say is that uh, we need to take this really seriously and the fact that we are living in a very fast paced world, we are living in times that are just moving like nobody's business. I wrote an email this morning and I was saying that literally to me, January 1st was yesterday and I blink, we are already in September. So with the way times are, you know, time is moving so fast with the technological advancement, you add social media, you add, um, you know, uh, politics, you add the effects of COVID-19, you add economic recession, um, what we are, we are learning that we are literally going into an economic recession. It would not surprise me that many, the numbers of depression and anxiety and related disorders is increasing because we are in tumultuous times. So bearing that in mind, one of the things I would say is that we need to really encourage people to get into this industry. We really need to get more coaches. We re really need to get more therapists. We really need to get more behavioral psychologists. We really need to get more people in the mental health team. And we're not necessarily even talking about, um, I'm talking about even in the social system. So when it comes even in the, in the, um, in the prisons or in the, we need people who are out there in the di different spheres, 
even in the churches, even in the temples, we need people uh, doing that. So some of the things we have um, I have seen being done, for example, you know, some of my churches in Kenya, they have actually a mental health team to support the people in the church who are struggling with mental health issues, right? For me as a coach, I have mental health support in terms of people I can refer to. So your community is one of the resource points that I get therapists or people like in Kenya. I know there are a couple of people in Kenya who I know I can talk to who can help the people in person. I know if I had a client in India who is struggling, the first person I'll send to you. So what we are doing right now is we are sort of releasing mental health disciples all over the world, right? So all this to say, uh, Bumika, is we need to um, to get more and more people, you know, seeing the mental health side of things as an area that they could potentially tap into. One of the plans I have for 2023, and I'm saying it out loud, is actually to do, um, to go back to uni for mental health right? I, I want to do a behavioral psych, uh, psychology course with mental health, you know, with a mental health um, piece attached to it. I don't know what that will look like, but I'm already doing my research. I'm already looking at what that could look like because being a coach is one thing, but being able to offer sound mental health advice and being able to give them the appropriate tools is something that I feel that now more than ever is needed in my toolbox. So uh, we are already a part of the global women community. So uh, when it comes to women's purpose in life, so although every woman person a purpose in life will be different, uh, but they really need to create and not to destroy it sometimes. So it is just to have uh, our family, our friends with more hope, love, and emotional resources than they have, they have before. It, it's like it's, it's to live our passion so that we can be an example to others so what can exactly be the women's purpose sorry there's a bit of a sound i didn't hear that okay, uh, okay i was actually asking that uh what can ex what should be exactly the women's purpose in life yeah so everybody has their own unique right and it is your responsibility to find what your purpose is and your purpose usually lies behind you know your giftings it comes from your experiences it comes from the things that you have gone through in life so as i you know there's so many ways that we can tap into your purpose your purpose can actually come from frustrations so one of the things i find like if you're frustrated about many people struggling with mental health issues, your purpose could be in that. So, it, you know, such a person would consider, again, being a therapist, could consider being a life coach because that's an area that they, that is a source of frustration for them. So your purpose can be found in so many ways. What are some of the things that you were growing up? When growing up, you were so passionate about that up to now, you know, you, you may have abandoned them, but you still love to do them. So as I grew up, I loved to speak everywhere I went, even in school. I was, you know, in the debate club. I was, I loved to talk. I had no issue being talking in front of people. So little did I know that my purpose was attached to that. And now as an adult, I can strongly see how my gifts as a child have led me to where I am, right? Another thing, as I said, is your skill sets and your experiences. So it's so easy to trans, if you've worked in a corporate job and you have some gifting. So for example, you're very good in accounting, you're very good in finance. That could be an area of your purpose where you're able to become an accountant and a consultant to help people with their finances because that's an area that you have greatly developed so everybody can be able to tap into that and some of them and obviously um, I'm sure that we'll be able to give them more of my contact but I want to say that our purpose is within us it's already inside it's not something that we're going to look for externally when we were born it was already deposited in us so all we need to do is to you know, use the resources and the tools to really ex excavate it from within ourselves. So uh, yeah. is there any way we can actually strengthen the positive mental well-being? I mean, uh, we can connect with other people, good relationships are important for our mental well-being. Well, and being active, being active is not just great for us and 
for the physical health and fitness as well. Uh, or maybe pay attention to the present moment that can be considered as mindfulness. So yeah. uh, are, ha, are there any ways to strengthen the positive mental health? Of course, just as I said, you we can use our, our affirmations. Affirmations are very helpful tools. You know, Absolutely. I am blessed, I am favored, I am prosperous. And saying it with conviction, right? I am so fortunate um, that I'm able to live out my life's purpose. I have been designed for such a time as this. Creativity is what drives me to live in my calling. You know, saying this affirmation, saying these things, I'm strong, I'm resilient, I am capable. I have everything it takes to live out my full purpose. Like being able to articulate your own, even if you don't believe it, keep saying it, keep repeating it to yourself and it will start slowly to stick in your head again we talked about the different tools that we can use like um uh app appli applications that we can use for um like headspace you know to help us in terms of meditation i shared calm there's so many different ones that we can use and then of course being in community with like-minded people i have created you know my own different communities on facebook you know where i share tools through facebook lives and all this that can help really people really step into their purpose and also a part of you know um community such as the one you have created where you you relate with like-minded people and as you operate with like-minded people some of the things that they share some of the resources that they share you can be able to add them to your toolbox so i strongly believe being in community with like-minded people is very important but again also um the, the some, some of those tools like meditation the mindfulness the affirmations the journaling journaling is one of the biggest tools i have used for my own mental health i write i love to write uh, and as much as I love to speak, I also love, you know, one of my clients is to bleed on paper. So I release all my feelings. I release everything on paper. And journaling has been a tool that I have used for very long. Another tool that really helps me is visualization, you know, visualizing for a better future. I also use vision boards and I teach vision boards to help people really tap into those in-depth desires that they have so there are so many tools but those are some of the ones that i could mention right now another thing also yeah. really quickly is hypnotherapy hypnotherapy is one of the tools that i know you know there are different yeah. programs it's not something that i teach because i don't know how to do it and it's not in my area but i know hypnotherapy is one of the tools that is very helpful in helping people really um release a lot of depression and anxiety and really get um, that fog out of their head, get the mental fog out of their head so that they can be able to really step into their purpose. So yeah, those are some of the ones that are off my head. Absolutely. So uh, are, uh, how are actually the emotions connected to the mental health? Emotional health is one aspect of the mental health and it, it is our ability to cope with the, both positive and the negative emotions which may include our uh, awareness of them and emotionally healthy people have uh, good coping mechanisms as well for the negative emotions so uh, uh, is it true that uh, how can exactly the emotions can be connected to the mental health um so as i said um earlier emotional intelligence is so important and how we deal with our emotions is 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 changes everything because emotions are part of our lives right emotions contribute to our feelings emotions contribute to our behavior uh, emotions contribute to how we interact with people and how we act depending on what happens so one of the tools that is so um, integral in helping people deal with their emotions is what is called emotional intelligence and it's you know a part um, it's one of the offshoots of psychology right where which we incorporate in our different programs because once your your emotional intelligence is up you know how to react in different situations you know how to respond in different situations you learn how to um to talk to people right you learn when to zip your mouth you learn when to open and then you become very self-aware so i strongly believe that your emotional health and your emotional well-being is very much tied to your 
self-awareness. It's very much tied to your self-confidence. It's very much tied to your self-identity. It's very much tied to your self-esteem. So very, very important to take care of your emotions. Yeah. Okay, so heavy wrap up for today's meeting. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining. Uh, thank so you. do you want to add something about uh, something about uh, in the end of this meeting, something about uh, our WhatsApp group? How how was your journey with the Global Women in Psychology uh, platform? Yeah. So do you want to add something? Yeah, of course. So um, the first thing I want to say is it's so important to be in community with people who are like-minded. You know, in this world, it's not easy to find people who, in, as I said, are operating and vibrating in the same frequency with yourself. So obviously being a part of the community that we are in with um, Bumika and the other ladies is, has been very instrumental in terms of even the resources. Sometimes all you need is does somebody have a tool that helps with this. And in five minutes, you already have that. Again, um, talking to people from different parts of the world, different cultures, different communities, very important. But above all, I think for me, is also strengthening ourselves as professionals because we are better together. You know, we lift each other higher when we are united. You know, I could be my own professional doing my own thing in my own little bubble. But when we're in a community, we lift each other up, we encourage each other. And that's the same thing I've also done for myself. You know, I have different communities I have created because I strongly believe that as women, um, you know, however cliche it sounds, women do better together. Women support each other better. And above all, uh, one thing that I know is that when you're in community, you move faster you know there's the african proverb that says you know al something like alone you can go far but together you go farther something like that I, um to that extent and i may have butchered the quote but the the you know the more we are the more impact we can have what i can do as an individual is very little compared to what we can do corporately so that's my parting shot and my final thing is if you are not living out your purpose as i say if you're not honoring your purpose you are suffocating your soul so you know reach out to Bumi and you know i'm sure we're gonna put this information on how to contact us reach out to me do not suffer in silence we are here to support you we are here to help you reach out to us our doors are wide open thank you so much professor for joining today's uh, interview session on the purpose of life and our mental well uh, thank you so much again thank you so much bumika and i will see you very soon yes absolutely i'm looking forward <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you.